Well, hey guys, I'm in my mask phase, primarily because it's nearing the end of the year and I wanna finish things up. I'm gonna do the Shawnee Darden Signature Nourishing Facial Mask. I rather enjoy this. I shared it with you guys a while ago. It's a clay mask, uh, it's fragrance free, and it helps to, let me put my hand down. It helps to soak up excess sebum from the surface of the skin from within the pore. I kind of feel like I'm face painting. Honestly, this is pretty zen. I came across, um, I came across like an Instagram reel or maybe it was on YouTube shorts of someone doing kids face painting. And the woman was painting this little girl's face to look like the Grinch. And it was the most relaxing thing to watch. <laughs> These are areas right here, the nasolabial folds, where you can get seborrheic dermatitis flare-ups. Like everywhere where basically where I'm putting where I'm putting the mask, except I'm not gonna put it through my eyebrows. <laughs> um, you can get seborrheic dermatitis, which is an oily skin condition characterized by seborrhea and flakiness, redness, and you also have malassezia getting too comfortable because malassezia is a yeast that's part of our skin's microbiome. It thrives off of the oils that your skin produces. So when you have a lot of oil, then it gets very comfortable and the immune system kind of responds to it with inflammation. Um, now a clay mask might help reduce some of that oiliness temporarily. Doesn't actually you know, alter oil production, but it just removes it from the surface of the skin. So that's kind of helpful. I'm gonna rinse out the brush. <laughs> And if you have acne, you have excess oil production as part of acne, that excess sebum on the skin, you know, as you go out throughout the day, pollution, which recently I did a video for you guys on the negative effects of pollution on the skin, so check that out. But pollution can oxidize that sebum. It's probably why people who live in more polluted areas, their acne tends to be more stubborn. And a lot of people, women in particular, report that their acne is much worse during periods of time when there is more pollution. So likely it plays a role. I'm not saying that a clay mask is gonna, you know, get rid of that, but in theory, you know, a clay mask may help remove pollutants from the surface of the skin, also that oil. I'm just gonna let it sit on there a few minutes, but I have a little update for you guys. Um, I finished, I've been working on this pretty much all year. Use it daily. I finished a tub of petroleum jelly. Vaseline is the name brand, but this is the up and up version. It takes me a while to go through a tub, but when I finish one, it's always like, I feel like I've completed some sort of victory. But this uh, up and up brand, last time I was in Target, I was looking at Vaseline, I was over there with you guys. Plain Vaseline, name brand petroleum jelly Vaseline is like four or five bucks. The up and up version is like half the price. Same thing, same exact thing, works the same. So next time you're in Target shopping for petroleum jelly, go with the store brand. Save yourself, save yourself some money. But yeah, I've really been doing this on my feet a lot. Speaking of Up and Up brand, also, you know, earlier this year, I tried out a bunch of Up and Up products and this is the Up and Up version of Aquaphor. So I've got this that I wanna finish up. It'll take me a while. Actually, I made, I don't know if you can tell in the yellow vat, I've made quite a dent. Um, so I'm using this right now instead of plain petroleum jelly just to finish it up. I don't love Aquaphor as much as I love CeraVe healing ointment or plain petroleum jelly, but it works. It gets the job done. It's great for my feet, my lips. Um, mineral oil is like the goat when it comes to softening and moisturizing dry skin plus petroglottum. Lanolin, you know, you gotta be careful if you're allergic to lanolin, but this is something that annoys me though, is if you are a skincare brand, you make something that is an, you know, especially a greasy ointment like this, don't put one of these labels on. It's not gonna stay on there and it's gonna, you know, start to peel off with, with time. So yeah, CeraVe does that with their makeup remover balm and it's so annoying. It's like just, I, I get why they do that because something about like, if they have surplus packaging, then they're able to remove the label and reuse the packaging for something. So I, I get it, I get it. 
but it's annoying for me, the consumer. But I'm willing to put up with that if it saves them from like making more unnecessary plastic jars. You know what I mean? Um, all right, I've had this on my face for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse it off with just cool, lukewarm water. The nice thing about the clay is that it takes away the oil from the surface of the skin, but you don't have the surfactants there for you know, removing excess lipid from your skin barrier. So it's a little, in a sense, almost gentler um, than washing your face. I'm gonna come on with my Cetaphil Healthy Renew Face Serum. Doing a clay mask also kind of helps skincare products penetrate a little bit more evenly in theory, just because the skin surface is degreased gently. You know, if you get, if you get a chemical peel, one of the first things they do is degrease the skin so that the peeling agent, you know, penetrates the skin evenly. It doesn't get caught up on little mounds of, you know, pooling of sebum on the skin surface, you know, which you can't really see with your eyes, but on a microscopic level, it makes a difference. So they decrease the skin surface. So it allows that to go on more evenly, but the degreasing is a little aggressive. I mean, it's fine for the purposes of a chemical peel, but it's not something you'd want to do as part of your everyday skincare routine. Cause you basically take like an alcohol prep pad or hurt some acetone on your face. All right, and I'm gonna come in with the CeraVe Hydrating Sheer SPF 30 today. Is, has anyone tried this? Um, let me know, what do you think about this packaging? I don't like it. I wish it were in a pump. The reason I wish it were in a pump is like when I squeeze the tube, I feel like it's gonna shoot out all over the place. People always ask me about sunscreens having a sunscreen smell, like when I'm reviewing them or talking about them, I'm gonna be like, does that have a sunscreen smell? This one has a hint of a sunscreen smell that is very similar to copper tone sunscreens. They're, they have a fragrant oil-free, copper tone oil-free faces, fragrance-free um, organic sunscreen has a similar aroma to this. But in contrast to that one, this is a hybrid sunscreen. So you get a little bit of a cast, but honestly, it's not bad. All right, time for some K-Beauty Advent Calendar unboxings. We're gonna pick up where we last left off with day 11. First up, Stylevana, and I'm really excited for this product from Isntree, a brand I really like. For example, I love their Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel, and I'm currently really enjoying their Tone Up Sunscreen. But this is a AHA Essence with lactic acid and glycolic acid. Those are ingredients that can soften dry, rough, and bumpy skin, improve skin tone, lighten dark spots. This also is free of fragrance, just has a nice lightweight consistency. I really look forward to giving it a try. Then here we have the Yes Style calendar with the cute little boxes. And I'm so excited about this sunscreen because I love this brand Ionic or at least everything from them that I've tried. Like one of the first products from them I ever tried actually came in one of these calendars. And this formula appears to be like, it's gonna be very moisturizing. It's an organic sunscreen, no cast. Then day 12, we have, oh yes, a lip balm, SPF lip balm from a Japanese brand, Hadalabo, which you guys know I love. Not sure if this has flavorant in it, which is a common irritant, but it's an organic sunscreen. Looks to be a very moisturizing formula and it has a pink tint to it. Then from Yes Style, another cute box there, we got a makeup product from Amuse Amuse. This is a lip tint, which is described as being dewy and long lasting. Didn't appear to have any fragrance or flavorant in it. And I look forward to seeing how this compares to those Etude fixing tints that I got in last year's advent calendars and have been loving this past year. Moving on to day 13 with Stylevana. Um, this day was, I think, another makeup product. Yes, mascara, you can never have enough mascaras. This brand is really good. Discovered them last year through the advent calendars. Love the packaging on this and it has a nice applicator. Here we are with Yes Style, day 13. This one was a bit of a disappoint while I really like this brand, Haru Haru. Like I love their gel cleanser. This was a hydrating serum. It has a very strong fragrance in it, which is of lavender. It kind of gave me a headache. I don't like strongly scented serums. They often give me a headache, but it's too bad. I really like the consistency. Anyway, come back for tomorrow's vlog. We'll unbox some more. Makeup brush cleaning time. This little gadget 
makes it so much easier to clean the brushes. I'm getting the cream eyeshadow out of this uh, brush from Merit. Side note, I have really been liking the cream shadow and cream blush from Ms. Merit Beauty. Um, I'm almost finished actually with the cream concealer that I have from Coppertone. The Sport Mineral SPF 50. I haven't seen these before. You get a spray. You know, sprays, they're not super reliable. You have to do multiple passes and then physically rub them in. And, but, you know, they, they tend to be more fast absorbing and non-greasy. Here you have, this actually looks pretty promising. Fragrance free. Am I reading that right? Yeah. Zinc oxide. I bet this is going to be casty, though. 1148. This one from Coppertone is good. The oil-free shine control, SPF 45. Um, it's, it's nice. Uh, organic sunscreen. For some people it might burn around their eyes, but um, I don't recall that being an issue for me with this one. And it's $8.98. Dang, the price of Coppertone is sneaking up. Because I swear this used to be like, I, I want to say six bucks. Maybe I dreamt that. The Banana Boat Sensitive Mineral is another good one. It's kind of like... This one's zinc and titanium dioxide. It is casty, but um, it's moisturizing. It's not too greasy. Then we have a lot of hand sanitizers, which are, um, you know, more than fine option for reducing the transmission of cold and flu viruses for hand hygiene if you can't get to, like, sink with soap and water. But honestly, there's, there's nothing beats doing a proper hand wash with soap and water. Me personally, I am i don't enjoy hand sanitizer, but I use it, you know, obviously. Um, and a lot of hand sanitizers these days, they have more moisturizing ingredients to help cut down on hand, um, irritant hand dermatitis that happens with frequent hand washing. Mmm, mold cider is not bad. Those holiday gingerbread. Mmm, that's actually really nice. Oh my gosh, you guys, these are so qual good quality, such good quality. You would be surprised. I bought one of these last year, but I bought it after Christmas. It was on mega clearance. It's the, it's the blanket that I always like wrap around my legs when I'm hanging around around the house that has like the little Christmas houses all over it. That thing, it looks brand new and I've washed it multiple times. Like it doesn't get all worn out and faded. This one's cute with the little dogs. Yeah, they're really nice. Little poodle. Rubbermaid storage containers and holiday colors. Oh look, it's my French press. These are so good. Mine doesn't have the white top, but. They have the little mini house kits in partnership with Swissmas, or I guess it's made by Swissmas. The elf on the shelf, $7. They're always fun to put together. I kinda like this, if it didn't say birthday girl, it'd be fun to drink it, your beverages out of. A little Winnie the Pooh mug. That's pretty nice, actually. Walmart has quite the nice selection of coloring books for a variety of ages. I always enjoy a good coloring book. It doesn't matter the age group either. Like sometimes I like the real kid ones because they <laughs> they have larger spaces. Like sometimes these type of ad more adult coloring books, they're they're easier to go outside of the lines. Like I mean, they're meant for adults, but you know what I mean. <laughs> What's Timeless Creations? Is this a food themed coloring book? Yep. See like this one that I just went by. I guess this one isn't too technical. Like this, that's kind of technical. I don't know. Dizzying. <laughs> coloring is really relaxing though. Here are some nice holiday throws. The snowflakes. I like that. Here's some holiday kitchen stuff. Cook with color. Walmart has really stepped it up with clothing over the past couple of years. Like, I this past year, I've purchased so many 
clothing items from Walmart and they have just held up really well. Like I bought all of these little sundresses over the summer and I'm still, well I'm not still wearing them because the weather has changed, but they are in really good condition. This is cute. <laughs> Comment below, is anybody going to an ugly Christmas sweater party? That would be fun to wear. These sweaters are kind of nice, $8. I like that color. Oh, these pajamas are so soft. I wonder if these hold up well in the washing machine or if they get all staticky. Oh, it's even got a little pocket here. They have a few different, oh, this one is sweet, like a little teddy bear. So soft. Oh, man, Nutcracker. I might have to have these to match my tree. <laughs> $10, that's not bad. Well, hey guys, I got new PJs. Super comfy and festive, bright and cheery. Update, I finished the Avino Tone and Texture Body Moisturizer. This is great if you have keratosis pilaris, by the way. It's got polyhydroxy acid in it, which is great for softening dry, rough skin. Also can help improve moisture content and skin elasticity. The polyhydroxy acid is gluconolactone. It's got shea butter, it's got oat. It's a wonderful texture I would show you, but it is empty. It's like this glossy silkiness. It's unlike any, any body moisturizer I've ever tried before. I love different textures of body moisturizers. I really think it can make a huge difference in someone's compliance of a body moisturizer, the texture alone. Like if a body moisturizer goes on like really um, streaky or if it's stiff um, and it stays white for a long time and doesn't absorb in, that is one that is not so fun to use. But if it's fast absorbing, if it's glossy, but not greasy, that, that's, a, that's a winning formula. So I have really enjoyed this. Also has coconut oil, an underrated natural, I say that in air quotes, because I mean, natural, yeah. Um, it's an underrated natural ingredient in skincare. It gets this bad rap out there as being poor clogging. But show me the data for which it is poor clogging. You really are not gonna find it. I mean, comedogenic readings, they have so many issues. All that to say, it genuinely does aggravate acne for some people, but guess what? Pretty much anything can aggravate acne for some people. So it's not clear if coconut oil is really a complete no-go uh, for people with acne. All that to say, if you use coconut oil from time to time, you notice it aggravates your acne, stay away from it, okay? Like. Don't pour gasoline on fire, you know what I mean? This has coconut oil, but one of the reasons I wanted to point out to you guys that coconut oil is underrated is it's one of the few of these like all natural type of ingredients, like natural remedies that actually has shown itself to be useful for patients who have atopic dermatitis. Like it's as good in some studies as like mineral oil. So that's saying something because mineral oil is king. And the reason I point that out too is like a lot of patients struggle with moisturizers. I mean. For us, we enjoy it. It's something we buy, right? Like we're into skincare here in this community, presumably. But for patients with atopic dermatitis, it's something they have to do to control disease flares, consistently moisturize. And it's not always everyone's cup of tea because uh, with atopic dermatitis, moisturizers, they can sting, they can burn, they're sticky, they're greasy. Sometimes certain moisturizers, depending on the consistency, they actually can aggravate the symptoms, symptoms of itch. I mean, it's a journey to find a moisturizer that someone likes. Not to mention, a lot of people with atopic dermatitis are like five years of age. So, you know, a lot more particular in that regard. Um, so all I have to say, like coconut oil, I bring it up. Uh, I, I give you all of this backstory and, and run my mouth for 20 minutes before getting to the point, of course. But coconut oil for some patients, you know, they, they basically are like, I don't want to try another moisturizer. Is there something more natural or whatever? Coconut oil is a reasonable alternative for them to try as a body moisturizer. It has a good track record and a lot of patients end up loving it and that's what they use. And they're like, you know, that's what I want to do. Um, and it doesn't sting for them. So I, I think it gets too much of a bad rap. Came in with the Gold Bond Age Renew Retinol Overnight. This, this, making its way into the best of 2023. I mean, y'all already know. This, I think, 
it's not just the best for me. I think I have gotten so much positive feedback. I consistently get an outpouring of positivity around us. I think A, because it's good, B, because it's like retinol, so it's an ingredient that people are specifically seeking out to improve the appearance of some of the visible signs of aging. You know, C, it's got some other anti-aging things in there too to improve the appearance of sun damage. But D, is that where we are in the alphabet? Dang. Um, it's so inexpensive. Like, it's, it's kind of worth a shot, right? So, highly recommend this. That's what I put on tonight. And I'm feeling moisturized, hydrated. I'm gonna come on in with tretinoin to my face. I put the um, Madagascar Centella. This, also loving. I'm telling you, 2023 has been a good year for me um, and stuff I've tried out. Um, I have not had too many fails. Main fail has been um, Brad Pitt's skincare, but that was kind of, you know, something we knew was not gonna be that good. Um, and it was, actually the cleanser was not that bad. Um, that was a fail. Um, those foot creams from Dr. Scholl's, those were a fail. I mean, that was basically like, almost like the body lotions you get in a motel that are all watery and not doing anything. That's what that was with the peppermint in there. Like we all need, like we all want peppermint scented heels. Come on, enough with the peppermint and the foot creams. Um, tried out Sunday Riley Good Jeans, gave me consistently gave me uh, chap lips, no matter if I protected them with petroleum jelly. Um, that wasn't overall horrible though, if I'm being honest. That was actually pretty good. Like it left my skin soft and smooth. Not my preference to have whatever that scent was. Was it lemongrass? Yeah, lemongrass, arnica. Anyways guys, I hope you all enjoyed today's vlog and you're having a great weekend. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.